Jen. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm not too sure will you be here today, but I still set up the meeting on time, so wait for you. It's on. Thanks for coming here on time. <laughs> Thanks for your participation. Oh, no problem. Okay, so um, this interview will be recording. I will turn on recording. Is that okay for you? That's fine. Recording in progress. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Uh, good, and weekend is coming, and hopefully we will enjoy this weekend as well. Yep, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, this is the way an interview will be about your experience during the last two years when we experience the coronavirus and the pandemic in New Zealand and do you have some experience related to stigma or stigmatization mm -hmm. around your life? So firstly, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit about your background and your occupation? Okay, yeah, um, I'm an office worker. Um, I was born in Dunedin. I'm currently 41 years old. Um, I've spent time living overseas uh, as well. I've lived in Japan for um, a number of years and I've lived in New Zealand for probably the last 17 years in Dunedin. Um, I went to the University of Otago as well. I've got uh, three degrees from the University of Otago. So that's that's the basics about me. Yeah, cool. And um, how about your last year experience? shortly before lockdown or the beginning of the pandemic uh before the yeah before the beginning it was a yeah it was good i was very happy um you know uh, life was great 20 uh you know 2019 that was that was a good year yeah how about in the end of 2019 and when the state uh, when the crime outbreak outside new zealand it was interesting i watched it um quite carefully you know I was interested in what was going on and I um I paid attention to the news back then um and you know I just tried to stay up to date with it because I thought it was an interesting topic yeah and how do you feel when the first case come to New Zealand uh when the first case come to New Zealand um I wasn't particularly concerned um, I thought that it was inevitable, you know, it was definitely coming to New Zealand anyway. I sort of figured that most of the world was going to be affected by this. It was going to be very difficult to avoid it. So I just felt as though that it was just a matter of time before it came to New Zealand. So, yeah, it, it, it didn't cause me any anxiety or any stress or anything like that. I just sort of thought it was a fact of life. And how about when lockdown comes to your real life? Yeah, um, I, in reality, it didn't impact me too badly. I was able to work from home. Um, I tend to exercise outside anyway, so that was okay because it was no problem to go outside. Um, yeah, lockdown itself, I, I handled okay. It wasn't really too much of a problem. And uh, what kind of experience relate to stigma? when you overcome these days? Well, I would say it mostly has come about in the later stage of the pandemic concerning the vaccination side of things. So I think that's where the stigma has really begun to become very strong. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And can you tell me more detail about that, that about vaccination? Yep, yeah, sure. So... Um, my opinion is that it's not possible for me to give informed consent for this vaccine because the information about it is not available. So there's no longitudinal studies, obviously, because there's been no time for any longitudinal, longitudinal studies to be carried out. And in fact, um, there's not actually even any official information about how long the vaccine protects you. 
that that information doesn't exist. So as far as I'm concerned, that means I can't give informed consent to be vaccinated. But I see in the media that people like me are told that we're conspiracy theorists and um, that we're anti-vax. I'm not anti-vaccine or anything like that. I, I'm quite happy for people to be vaccinated, um, for people to make their own choice about vaccination. And I'm quite happy um, to take other vaccines that have got a track record. Um, so I'm none of those things. Oh, and I, I'm not a far right extremist, which is another thing that people tend to put in the media about people who have got questions. Um, so the way I feel is that I have legitimate questions about this topic, but I'm being put into these categories that don't represent who I actually am. Okay. So how could it represent how could you define your identity? Could you tell me more detail about what's that change? Um, what, what exactly do you mean? Like, well, I mean, what, well, the way I feel about it is that um, there is not enough information available, I guess. That's all I can really say. And that I'm a big believer in individuals choosing what they want to do. So um, if a person wants to get vaccinated and they feel as though they've got the information they need, then I really support that and they should go ahead and do it. But equally, if a person doesn't want to, then that should also be their decision, I think. Um, so as, as far as my behavioural change is concerned, I guess, and maybe that's um, what I need to talk about. Uh, these days, it's really um, acceptable to just ask somebody if they've been vaccinated or not. Like, it's a really strange question normally to ask somebody, hey, have you had a particular medical procedure or have you, you know, it's, it's not normal. Like, you wouldn't normally ever ask anybody about that. But currently, it's very acceptable. And if you give an answer anything other than yes, then you're immediately placed in the conspiracy theorist right-wing extremist um, category, you know, and it, but that is not, you know, and so it actually takes a lot of explanation to another person. You have to really be able to explain yourself to avoid being placed into that those categories, which are not the appropriate categories for me to be in. Yes, true. And I also read your online so why you mentioned about some news and online articles and every day you listen to the public policy announcement make you feel mm, misrepresented yes. some of me. Yes. So can you tell me more detail about that? Um, yes, I saw an article in stuff.co.nz where there was another person, a public person, who was saying that they're also not comfortable with the amount of information available about the current vaccine. And the article really just went on to slander them and say that they're a privileged person and they shouldn't be allowed allowed to make that sort of decision. And the way I felt about that was, well, I'm in a similar position to, the, to that person. So the article is kind of saying the same things about me in that case, because, you know, they're saying them about that, her. So, yeah, there's been articles about that. There's been things that the government has said that I think are a, kind of encourage division as well. I don't think it's very in inclusive. Um, but at the same time, I understand where they're coming from. Like, I know what their strategy is. So um, I know why they're doing what they're doing, but I don't think they're being completely um, ethical about what they're doing personally. Yeah. And that's the other thing, is that the other, the other category that you get put into, apart from being a conspiracy theorist and a right-wing extremist and an anti-vaxxer, is that you're uneducated or that you're some kind of guy who doesn't know what he's talking about, which also annoys me because this is I've looked very carefully at, at the information that's available, so I, I don't consider myself to be uh, uneducated on the topic. Yeah, true. So how could you address this kind of situation? Well, um, there's a couple of things. You can just withdraw. So currently I'm working from home and I know that in my office most people will be vaccinated and I know that people will ask me if I'm vaccinated or not and I really just don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to continue working from home for as long as I possibly can just so that I don't have to deal with that, that kind of questioning. Um, because I don't owe anybody an explanation. It's my personal business, you know. But unfortunately, if you say anything other than, yes, I'm vaccinated, 
um, in everybody's minds, you're immediately in one of those categories that I told you about. And I don't actually have to explain myself. You know what I mean? It's not up to me to to take myself out of those categories. It's up to those people to not put me in them because they're incorrectly putting me into those categories. Um, so that's one strategy is just to avoid the whole thing. Um, the other thing would be to actually try and explain my position to people. But, you know, you're up against people who read the news all day long. So it's me versus new, news after, like, pages and pages of internet news I, I can't compete with that um and especially because you know I, i'm just some guy they're reading things from the people that they believe to be experts so i mean I, I, the other thing is i don't want to change anybody's mind i'm not here to be some kind of person who's who's advocating for my position i'm just saying that um this is my position and that's what i'm going to stick to and you guys can do whatever you want so I'm not out there trying to say nobody should do this, you know, or anything like that. So this, while I could explain myself, I feel like I don't really want to. And so there's some level of withdrawal, but I'm a pretty solitary person in the first place. So it doesn't actually matter too much to me anyway. Yeah. So you become more silent than before? Definitely. Yeah. On this topic. Yes, definitely. And... How about how could it influence your social network? Well, um, it won't influence my social network too much because the people that I'm friends with are very open minded people and they're very accepting. And so I've got a lot of friends who are vaccinated and I've got a lot of friends who are not vaccinated and we all get along together fine because we all respect that that is the personal choice of each individual person in the group. So it's not going to affect my personal friendships at all. Um, and it just so happens those are the sorts of people that I happen to be friends with. Um, but it's more so acquaintances um, and maybe maybe extended family. I haven't had any problems with extended family, but that, that's a possibility. Um, but in terms of, well, the traffic light system is obviously going to impact me a little bit when that comes in. I won't be able to access the hairdresser uh, and I won't be able to access certain other things. But... I'm actually not too upset about that. I think if that's the price I have to pay to maintain the way I feel, then that's okay. I'll pay that price. Yeah. And you mentioned a term, bodily autonomy. Yes. Can you learn more about that? Yeah. Well, um, I believe that your body is yours and you can do what you want with it and nobody can tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing with your own body. That's the things that you do with it are your decision. So um, I've chosen to do certain things with my body over the years. For example, I don't drink, I've never ever drunk coffee in my life. I've never had a Big Mac in my life. Those are the sorts of things I've decided to do with my body. But if other people want to do other things, that's their business. And I don't think that anybody should be pressured into doing something with their body that isn't fully their decision. I really strongly disagree with people's jobs being threatened um, with this particular thing because I don't believe you can give informed consent if they're saying uh, consent to this or we take your job away. I don't see how that can be ethical. To me, that is not ethical. And I actually um, studied psychology at the University of Otago and I know a little bit about ethics and there's no way that you could do an experiment where that kind of ethic was involved. It would be rejected. There's no way. Yeah, that's true. And uh, how about your family? Do they agree with you? Most of them do. My immediate family do agree with me. Some of them don't. And that's cool. That's no problem. I've got an who was recently vaccinated. My doctor is thinking about becoming vaccinated. And I really support that. Like, if they've got the information that they think that they need, then I encourage them to go ahead. Because maybe I'm wrong. Like, that's the other thing I accept. It's possible that I'm the one who's wrong and everybody else is right. And if that's the case, that's that's fine. But I'm going to make my decisions. And, uh, yeah, that's the way I feel about it anyway. But, yeah, so my family are very supportive. I've got no problems there at all. Uh, no pressure from them. And I would never pressure them to do or not do something. Yeah. And you mainly work from home. So how... Do you, dip, uh, do you feel difficult or you intend to avoid to go to any public space at the moment? 
Um, I work, yeah, I work from home. Um, most of my work is computer based, so it's quite easy to work from home. No problem there. Um, in terms of going to public spaces, no, I don't really, I don't really go to any public spaces really. Uh, I went to the doctor today, um, but apart from that, no, I just exercise like running in the park. So I don't actually, um, I very rarely go out. I don't really go to restaurants or anything like that anyway. I just not the kind of person that I am. So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter. I go to the supermarket. That's probably the only thing, the only thing where I really go to a public place. But other than that, not really. Okay. So do you use social media a lot? Zero. I have no social media. Okay. Cool. And. Uh, do you feel the coronavirus thing caused some difficulty to build trust with other person? Um, hmm. Let me think about that for a second. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants a good outcome. I really do think that. But I think that people have different ideas about how to get to a good outcome. And as I've said to you previously, the one thing I don't like is when people tell me what to do and I would never tell somebody else what to do. That's the only thing I don't like. And so um, I really want to get to a good outcome just like everybody else. And I think that everybody's on board with that. So I don't feel a, a loss of trust, really. Um, I mean, it's, it is a little bit disturbing to see, you know, um, comments in the media about how we must force everybody to do this or that. It's, that I don't like that at all. Um, but apart from that, I think the trust amongst the general public is still there. And I, you know, it's a little bit harder when you've got a mask on because you can't see anybody smiling you know it's like you kind of have to judge just with people's eyes about what's happening so that is a little bit more difficult but i think in general um everybody is on kind of on the same page and so you feel you belong to the whole new zealand as one of the five million right mm, no but i never have never i never have Ever. No. So um, that would be well before coronavirus. I, yeah. So it's not nothing to do with coronavirus. Yeah. So this thing didn't change this kind of feeling or this pandemic increased this kind of feeling. I, I would say it increased it. I mean, it was already there for me forever, but I think this has increased it. Um, just because it does seem like that there is a certain percentage of the population that really wants to force some of us to do things that we don't want to do. And that's a little bit scary because I didn't think New Zealand was that kind of country. So can you tell me more example or details about how this kind of feeling are increased in your life? You can feel... Yeah. What kind of situation let you feel this kind of things increased? Well, um, yeah, I can probably give a couple of examples. We had, you know, um, normally when you're going to some kind of social event, you don't yeah. normally disclose your medical background. So, for example, we had a uh, memorial service for my aunt who died recently, maybe two or three weeks ago. And so the unvaccinated members of my family, just to be polite, they rang ahead to say, hey, just to let you know we want to come. Is it okay if we come? We're not vaccinated. And it's like, that's a really strange, that's something completely new. That's not normal. You don't normally ring your relatives to ask if it's okay to come because of a medical procedure or your medical intervention, you know. So that was definitely something a little bit different and a little bit strange. Um, and then, as I've said to you before, I have the, the, the feeling that um, it's a lot more acceptable now to ask people about their vaccination status. And so I think my co-workers would do the same thing. And as I've said, that's one of the reasons why I'd prefer to work from home, just so I don't have to deal with 
those kinds of questions. I don't have to explain myself and say, no, guess what? I'm not a, um, <clears throat> I'm not a right wing extremist or whatever. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and the other one was when I really began to feel the pressure and some level of stress was when Air New Zealand said that, um, only vaccinated people could use Air New Zealand internationally from 1 February. That's when I began to feel quite a lot of stress. Um, because I really felt like that was, I don't know, a, a little bit beyond what Air New Zealand should be telling me to do. They should be telling me how to get places, not what I should be doing with my body, in my opinion. Mm, true. I agree. So, um, are there any changes between last year and this year in your life? Apart from working from home more, uh, not huge changes. Um, I mean, to be honest, um, when Air New Zealand started talking about the mandatory vaccination, um, my wife and I actually booked a flight to leave the country permanently. We just weren't going to come back um, before that. So we had, we had booked a flight on the 26th of January to leave New Zealand and not come back. Um, but I couldn't get my visa and stuff sorted out in time. And there were actually a few things that we need to finish in New Zealand first anyway. So it didn't really work out. But that's the strength of feeling that we had was that we were just going to leave. And I actually, we are going to leave permanently. And, um, but it's not going to be for another 12 months now. Um, but yeah, I feel pretty good about leaving New Zealand now and not coming back to be totally honest. Can you tell me more detail about that? Why, what kind of feeling make you make the decision to leave this country permanently? Well, I need to make it clear that we were always going to leave at some point. So it's not because of coronavirus ah. that we're leaving, but it ah. does make me feel good that we're leaving, knowing that there's certain, there's a certain subset of people in the country that would force you to do something that you don't want to do with your own body is a scary thought. And I would just prefer not to be around people like that. So that makes me feel good about leaving, but we were always going to leave no matter what. Yeah. Uh, yes. And how about, because currently some countries are using vaccination as a passport or visa condition. Yeah. So, so it's probably a thing around the world, not just happen here. So how do you feel the whole change? Well, I don't like it, obviously. Uh, but the country that we're going to is has been very relaxed about coronavirus in general. And um, they have got no uh, vaccine mandate to enter the country. And... Um, they're actually doing very well with coronavirus and they're not, they've got pretty low vaccination rates comparatively. So yeah, again, th this is again where it doesn't really add up. We're going to move to Tokyo and Tokyo has got like 30 million people and they've got comparatively a small number of cases and a small number of deaths and, and fairly low vaccination rates. So the mathematics on that just doesn't really add up. Something else is going on. But anyway, um, the Japanese government is not really that intent on forcing people to get vaccinated before they show up. Oh, and the other thing is the Japanese are moving to a different type of vaccine technology. They're moving um, away from the mRNA and viral vector vaccines, and they're moving into protein subunit vaccines, which they're actually going to manufacture themselves. And so it's a far more traditional style of vaccine, which I would have no problem taking. Uh, yes. I think China also take that kind of vaccine. Yep. Well, well. They do. They've got yeah. Sinovax, which is uh, it's a protein subunit vaccine. That's right. Yeah. And so uh, when you don't feel belong here, uh, so is it influence your well-being? It has, the, the, well, it has a little bit recently. Um, but it's mostly the thought of being forced to do something I don't want to do. That's the main area of stress that's getting me. But obviously having to explain myself to people and wanting to avoid situations like that is also a bit, a little bit of a problem. 
but um, I'm tough enough to get around that. that like, that's not really going to have a major impact on me because, of, you know, whatever. But but the fact that uh, the fact that uh, that I might be forced to do something to use an aeroplane that causes a lot of stress because I just I don't agree with that. I think that's I'm being held hostage in a way. But in terms of I know that this is more about stigma and um, for me really like peer pressure and that kind of thing has never been a problem for me. I'm, I've always been fairly um, independent, so. I'm able to um, sort of push that to one side, really. But it's still not a nice feeling. It's just not going to crush me, but it's just not a nice feeling. Mm, yeah. And how could you uh, make something to uh, maintain your well-being? Well, uh, I think just taking it one day at a time, not thinking too far ahead is important. Um, you know, as I said, we've changed our delay, we've delayed our travel plans a little bit now by 12 months. And I think that things could be quite different in the COVID situation between now and in 12 months time. So, um, it's possible that there'll be totally different medications available and I won't have to compromise any kind of belief that I have. Um, I'll just have the information that I need to feel comfortable to take the medical intervention. So in that case, that would be great, and I would feel completely unburdened, and that would be wonderful. But so yeah, I think just taking it one day at a time is important, and not getting too, um, not thinking too much about what's going on. Yeah, the other thing I guess that um, does uh, cause some stress, which actually has just happened to a friend of mine today, um, is to be told that you're going to lose your job unless you get vaccinated with this vaccine. And that, I think, is far too far. And again, that is not informed consent by anyone's definition. It is not informed consent to say you lose your job or consent to this. Mm, true. So, are there any more situations make you feel unfair? Well, see, the thing is, just to look at me, you can't tell I'm not vaccinated. So, uh, it's very difficult for people to be... Uh, to be stigmatized without them knowing that. Now, we are going to get this new, you know, phone thing um, where you have to scan in or, or some kind of vaccine passport. I don't know what that's going to do. I mean, oh, the other thing is, I'm going to start having to cut my own hair. So people are going to start saying, James cuts his own hair now. That could be an indicator that something's not quite right, you know. Um, so there's just little things like that. But, um, you know, as I've said, People can think whatever they want to think. The key thing is that I don't want to be made to do something that I don't want to do. I mean, everyone's entitled to think what they want to think about me. That's fine. They're, they're allowed to have their opinion. But um, I prefer it to be an accurate opinion rather than one that has been created in the media, you know? Yeah. So you make the judgment by yourself or you make the judgment based on some media or your close family the judgment oh well i mean i read the um the vaccination information sheet that's provided by pfizer and under the heading of how long will i be protected it says we don't know it says we'll find out after we finish our stage three clinical trial well that's not good enough I need to know how long specifically the vaccine protects me for so that I can make a judgment about whether or not I should take it. It's just not good enough information. Uh, and, the, and the safety section, it's got something along the lines of, you know, we think it's safe, but we don't have long-term data. Again, not good enough for me. And I'm not trying to be a bad guy and I'm not trying to be anti-vaccination. I've had lots of vaccinations in my life, right? But I've had vaccinations that have been tested for years and years and years and years and that have lots of safety data and that have um, predictable um, behavior. So if you get like a tetanus shot, you know that it's good for 10 or so years, right? And okay, 10 years, that, that's a good deal. I'll take, that, I'll take that risk to get that shot. But, you know, a lot of the data that we're seeing from countries like Israel is showing that this vaccine lasts maybe six months, maybe seven months. Not good enough. 
just not good enough. And also, we now know that the vaccine does not prevent you from transmitting the disease to somebody else. So, again, I don't appreciate this, um, the government's perspective that this is somehow a, um, a duty to the rest of the country when it has a marginal effect on whether or not you can spread the virus to someone someone else. And in fact, Harvard University just put a study out recently that said they could find no correlation between rates of vaccination and the number of cases in a particular country. And they studied 63 countries and they could find no correlation. So that's the other thing that kind of annoys me a little bit is that the government's message is very, very, very simple, safe and effective. But this is much more complex than that. That's too simple. That message is too simple. It, maybe it's safe. We don't know. Long term, we don't know. And effective, mm, it's not effective like other vaccines are effective. It's not effective like um, the measles, mumps and rubella vaccine is effective. You know, that protects you for a very, very, very long time. So I think that it's a little bit disingenuous to say that this is safe and effective. Sorry, that's a bit of a rant on my position there, but yeah, that's what I think anyway. Uh, that's really cool insight. So uh, after you make the decision, um, any, uh, any anti-decision from your surrounding or close relationship, Oh, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you say that again, sorry? Uh, are there anyone in your close relationship around you to defect this kind of decision? Oh, to, uh, to give, who didn't like it or? Yeah, don't like it. Uh, no, no, no one. Um, everybody, no, no. no, all my friends are supportive. Uh, my family's completely supportive. Probably my family's like 50-50 um, vaccination and not vaccinated. And my friends are probably maybe 75% not vaccinated, 25% vaccinated. Um, some of them are in medicine and health, so they had to get vaccinated because they work in hospitals and things like that. Um, but yeah, no, my position didn't cause any trouble in my friends and family. It's more the wider public. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's more the wider public. Oh, and that's the other thing, is that I don't really enjoy being told what to do with my health by people who are definitely, definitely less healthy than me to begin with. You know, I don't want to be told by someone who's grossly overweight what I should be doing with my health because they clearly don't care about their health. And we know that obesity is a risk factor in COVID-19, a serious risk factor. In fact, it's one of the main risk factors. And I don't have that because I'm constantly exercising. So yeah, I, I really object to someone telling me what to do. I would never tell them to lose weight. That's their business. So if they want to eat cookies all day, go for it. No problem for me at all, right? But I like to do what I like to do. That's like running and things outside. So just leave me alone, you know? Let me do what I want to do. And maybe they're right. Maybe COVID-19 is going to get me, but at least I was the one making my own decisions. I'm happy with that if I'm the one making my own decisions. That's the most important thing. Yeah. So, uh, after you were talking about your workspace and working relationship and also some people who make judgment on you or maybe make you silent, uh, any other things just like... Uh, public transportation or do you have religion or anything related to that? Um, well, public transportation, um, of course, I'm happy to do what needs to be done. So I'll definitely wear a mask on public transportation. Um, and, you know, that's fine. I've got no problem with that. And again, at this time, nobody can tell that I'm not vaccinated. So it's not a problem because I'm not going to like wear a T-shirt that says I'm not vaccinated or anything like that. So um, no problem. As far as religion is concerned, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, I was raised Roman Catholic, um, but I'm not 100% certain on, on that, really. I don't think it would affect any other medical decision that I would make, so I don't think I could honestly say that it has any impact on this situation, I don't think. Or uh, worship, do 
do worship regular? Not, not really, no. Maybe once a year, something like that. Ah, okay. So, uh, when we get, get out of the lockdown, do you have some gathering with your friends or something party like that? In the past or in the future? Uh, between the two lockdowns. Ah. Uh, after this well in the first lockdown of course we respected the rules and i never i didn't see my family at that time i just have was here with my wife that's all um and yes when the lockdown finished it wasn't specifically a party or anything like that but we did start to get together more and you know have dinner together and that kind of thing um but it wasn't to celebrate the end of the lockdown it was more just okay we're allowed to do this now so we went ahead and did it and I mean, I could see a good reason for that, and yeah, so no problem there. And and I'm in, you know, obviously I'm in Dunedin, so it hasn't been as severe. It's been like a level two lockdown, so you still got that element of being able to see each other a little bit more. But when it was the more severe lockdown, yeah, we we didn't see each other. We just called each other on Skype. Um, yeah, but but there was no celebration or anything like that when we got out of it. It was just like, okay, that part's over. What's next, you know? Yeah. And did it influence your health perspective around other aspects? For example, access the public health service or something like that? Um, well, it did. It, it did change a little bit about my health. I decided that um, I would try and increase my cardiovascular exercise. So I've been doing a lot more cardiovascular exercise and also just taking just some vitamin supplements, stuff like that, just to try and improve my own health. But in terms of public health, um, no, I went to the doctor today for the first time in three years. So I don't use public health services very often. Um, but today I had to go and get a blood test. So I, I, uh, I did go, but that's the first time in three years. Yeah. Uh, do you feel experience? Have you experienced any difficulty in accessing public health during this period in New Zealand? Um, I'm just going to think about that for a second. Not really. No, I haven't because I haven't needed to access public health really. I've been to the dentist a couple of times, um, but in terms of like a GP or a hospital. No, because I didn't have to go. But if I did have to go, maybe I would have. But it's just, yeah, I didn't have to go. And uh, that's good. No, no need to go. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, have you access any educational facilities? Like a university or a library or something like that. Something like that. Yes. Uh, I've been to the library to pick up a book for my wife. Uh, that's all, nothing else. Ah, uh, so have you have difficulty in accessing the uh, government service, just like council or something like that? Um, just going to think about that. Uh, no, I haven't had to call any government services, I don't think, at all this whole time. No, nothing. Nothing. No no issues with access. Yeah. Ah, uh, cool. So, um, I think we have discussed the main question we want to cover. And are there anything you want to add on? Uh, no, I don't think so. Th uh, thanks for inviting me to participate. Thanks for your time and interviewing, and you have very insightful opening about vaccination. I think it's very valuable oh, about thanks. to know this kind of stigmatization and this voice. Thank you. Thank you. And I will email you to ask your postal address, and we will deliver the water to your address. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much.